Turning some electrical equipment off. Mm -hmm. Fuel starter both, master switch on, strobe on, fuel starters on both. Flaps up. Alright, so now we're on the engine starting checklist, mixture. We need to put, hold on to this, I'll just lift yeah. it over your shoulder. Um, Carburetor heat, this is what we're doing. primer, we don't need a primer. Or right here, primer. And we don't need a primer because we're just flying. Okay. Throttle. Eighth, eighth open. open. Yep, so it's just a little bit shut. Um, Magneto starter. So we'll turn around here, get the key. And then, clear prop. We'll look around. Some air moving. Alright, I was kind of in a hurry for that. <laughs> uh, throttle a thousand. GPS it'll pick up as soon as we roll out. Um, so now we'll go and check the weather. Thousand niner hundred. Shenandoah Valley Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. One five four seven Zulu weather. Wind calm. Visibility one zero four thousand seven hundred. Five thousand five hundred. Scattered ceiling seven thousand. Broken temperature two niner Celsius. Dew point one niner. Altimeter three zero one one. Remarks. Density altitude two thousand niner hundred. That's so one more time to get the winds when you're checking this, you know, you want to check for, primarily, I mean, you're checking the other stuff too, but that's usually done before you get up in the air. Shenandoah but the wind, you'll check so you know which runway to take off of. Right. One, five, four, They're right here. Zulu. They don't, Weather. Wind. I guess the pilot decides that. The wind's calm. Zero. So now we'll just ask what the active runway is. So, Shenandoah Unicom, Cessna 2879 or Quebec, radio check and request airport advisories, please. And 79 Quebec, winds are calm, traffic's using 5, Shenandoah. Shenandoah. Thank you very much. Alright, so they, you know, comp told us that people are using 5. Which, that's Nathan right now, actually. The guy you talked to. Yeah. Alright, so we got the engine started, oil pressure, weather's done, flying instruments, check and set. We're checking to make sure there's zero level, point up. Um, 1200 is about our altitude here. Coordinated, the ball's in the cage. You're just, we're, we're checking the six pack here. Yeah. Um, Coordinate the balls in the cage, no cracks or bubbles, and then we'll, this always will have to be changed. The gyroscopic instrument, so good. These three are all on gyro, but this one gets really messed up all the time in every plane. Is, you're matching you're, that I'm matching it to the compass, right. And our perspective may actually be different. The way I'm looking at the compass, I can see it right on the 15, and for you, you might see it a little bit different away. Right. And vertical speed is roughly at zero, so that's what it's working. Alright, so now we'll let them know that we're taxiing to runway 5. Shenandoah traffic, Cessna 2879 or Quebec is taxiing from the hangars to runway 5, Shenandoah. Alright, so I'm going to do a brake check. 
Uh, my brakes are good. You have the controls. Okay, I've got the controls. Uh, you've got the controls. And you can leave your window actually. You can leave your right. window open for now. Otherwise, it'll get way too hot. So you've got the controls and check your brakes. So the top part of the pedals. Yep. All right. Um, and you can taxi it straight. And just like flying, taxiing, or driving, it's all about small corrections. And then you can keep your right hand on the throttle if you like, or I'll help you for now. Stand up okay. traffic, Twin Command C738 I like to slow to down here. Area to the west. 3100 will be setting up for uh, simulated vectors for the Atlas Flash. Alright, now I cycle looking left and right before I go straight. So now you're good to go. And Stand sometimes you have to give it a little jump of power to get it rolling, and then you can just pull back Stand out. Up. So we'll go straight following that yellow line. I will actually do our run up on the helipad here since there's no one here. So we'll aim a little bit more to the right here. I have a double edged sword. Pilots have to get used to not to staying on the line and not to the left of it, and drivers that fly planes have to get used to driving on the left side. Yeah. I had a funny picture of this one guy I know. Here, I'll take the controls real quick. I'm okay. just gonna whip this around on this helipad. He he got he had a, his wife took a picture, he was driving on the interstate, he was right on the middle line. And he was like, Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I forgot I'm not flying. Alright, so we'll do our run-up check. So, parking brake, I, I just like to hold the brakes just because I like manually doing it. Okay. Flight controls check. I'm checking the flight controls to make sure, you know, up and down. And I'm looking at the other side, up and down. And that's what's going to control our bank. Yeah. Which you flew earlier, so you have a little bit of idea. Miss the stuff. Elevator, check, make sure that's waving at us, and then All checking right, the rudder. Traffic at 2 9 mic is departing runway 5, Shenandoah. I'm going to check the uh, RPMs. Huh? I'm going to take it up to 1700. I'm going to check the magnetos, or first I'm going to check the mixture. You just see a drop to make sure the mixture is working fine. And I'm going to check the left mag. RPM. Yep, I don't, see it. I don't want to see a drop of more than 100. Okay. Actually, that looks good. Um, ammeters, positive charging uh, for the alternator belt. And uh, the engine gauges are good. And the suction's in between 4 and 6. I want to check to make sure the carburetor heat's working, which you just see a small reduction in power because the hotter air with the carburetor heat is less dense. Okay. Um, so you get less performance out of the hotter air, which makes sense. And then we're going to do an idle check. You know, do, do you want to double check that when you're coming in for a landing, when you pull it idle, you know, the engine's not going to like mess up on you or something. Right. Right. So yeah, so then that's the run-up checklist right here that we just did. And then take it back up to 1,000. Then we'll taxi to 5. Shenandoah traffic system 2 at 700, Quebec taxiing Alpha to runway 5, Shenandoah. Alright, and you've got the controls, you can uh... Alright. Alright, you've got the controls. I don't know if they talked about this earlier, one thing we do is called positive exchange of controls. Um, you know, if you want to take the controls from me, you can say my controls. And then I'll let go and say your controls. Um... And then you say my controls one more time. It's a three-step process every time you hand off the controls. And that's something examiners require to see on a check right. ride. Positive handoff. Right. That would probably be the worst way to fill a check ride. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you do everything right, and then it's like, oh, my controls, and you don't do it the third time. But... That makes sense from a safety perspective, because, you know, you want to make sure that both sides are on the same page. So we'll just... Slow it up a little bit with the... Just. Now one trick to following the yellow line is I like to look as far back as I can. And then just kind of being sensitive with the rudders. I think what we're coming up on right now is called the hold short line. Uh, you always hold short of the hold short line. You know, it's <laughs> kind of like, like a stop sign. Right. Um, you can see the way the line looks weird, and it says runway 5, telling us that we're on 5. Um, so, Shenandoah traffic 7-9, Quebec holding short, runway 5. So we hold short here, and this is where we do our before takeoff checklist. So doors and windows secure. Shenandoah traffic, twin command C7288, is about uh, uh, a little bit too much. Uh, yeah. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Everyone does that, that's why I was waiting for it. <laughs> Flight instruments are still good. Um, fuel valve is on both. And uh, 
Elevator trim is neutral, so you can see that little white bar it slides up and down. You want to make sure it's on the arrow. Uh, flaps are up. You hear that nasty noise when the flaps are up. Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of nice because you're fine. You can hear it. Um, mixture full. Transponder altitude. So they can read it. So ATC could read what altitude we're at. Carburetor heat cold. Landing light on. And then traffic check. So we're going to visually look around and make sure there's no traffic, and then we'll give a call. Shendo traffic Cessna 2879 or Quebec is departing runway 5 and we'll be heading towards northeast Shenandoah. Right, so I'm just going to get us just kicked around here a little bit. Alright. I've got the controls. And then when I do takeoffs, um, which I'll have you I'll have you do the takeoff. Um, now you're holding the brakes, take the RPM up to 2000, then you're checking to make sure the gauges are still green. If they're green, you release the brakes and then just smoothly apply full power. And then you pull back when it's at 60 miles per hour, which is 60 on the outer ring. On the uh, airspeed. Yep. I don't actually use as much runway as possible for every one of my takeoffs. <laughs> it's kind of a safety thing, you know. If right. you have a problem, you have more Go runway. Alright, so I'll let you, you can hold the brakes to your controls. Alright. Alright, take the power up to 2000. Or, yep. You can do a little bit faster than that. Up here? Yep. Alright, two green. Now you can let go of the brakes. And smoothly advance full throttle. Alright, now when the airspeed needle starts moving, which it is now, I like to say airspeed alive. And then once it gets to 60, pull back. Alright, now I want to pitch forward just a little bit because you want to climb out at 80 miles per hour. So right now your pitch is controlling the airspeed. And we'll turn out, we'll follow the runway right now. We actually have to give it right rudder because uh, of torque and P factor, which it's a very basic way to explain it right now without getting into it, because we'll do a ground school on it. Um, since the propeller is rotating this way, the plane wants to yaw that way, so you have to get a little bit of right rudder on every time you're climbing. Okay. You're doing good, though. I was actually, I like that takeoff. Sometimes I have guys the first time, and I have to stop them from ripping that plane up. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. And it's good to kind of do it smoothly and gradually. Everything you do in flying should be smooth. Ooh. Might have just been a gust. We'll fly out that way. Um, if you want to give me a heading, the heading is 070, um, but we're just going in the valley in between the two mountains there. Okay. And Shenandoah traffic, Cessna 287 Iron Quebec, straight out departure towards the northeast. We'll be climbing up to 3,500 Shenandoah. And Shenandoah traffic, twin command, C88 Yankees over Stan. 3,100 setting up vectors for the ILS-5, full stop check. Altimeter. There. Yep. Seems like you've done this before. Uh, just once. <laughs> you actually see that using that flight sim will really help you with your situational awareness. That's one of the big things pilots need to have. You know, understand, okay, I got my altitude, I've got my speed, I've got, you know, where I'm going. Where do you live? Uh, down near Stan, just south of Stan. Oh, cool. Yeah, so this is um, SHD and W13 are about the same distance from me. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's good that you're checking out all the schools in the area. It's nice to have options. Yeah. It's a beautiful area to fly. I did all my training at Richmond, and it was not quite as nice. <laughs> <laughs> to avoid a lot of jets down there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had one day. All we had to do was go up and do three landings. It took, like, seriously, it took, like, two and a half hours because we had to keep... We would be on final approach, and then they'd be like, go around because there's another plane coming, so they had right. to move us out of the way. And since we're in a Cessna versus, you know, a United plane, we don't really have priority. Right. All 
That's right, 3,000 feet. Usually that's where I lean the mixture a little bit. Okay. I don't like leaning it too much while I'm up in the air, but, you know, I'll just do it just enough so the spark plugs don't get fouled. Right. I don't know if you ski at all, but that's massive nothing straight ahead of us. Yeah. Don't, don't ski a lot. I've been a couple times. Yeah. Charlottesville is right over that mountain there. Very short flight. So, do you want to level at 3, or where are we going? Uh, we'll go up to 3,500. And then you can just kind of... I want you to level the nose forward and just pull out the power. I usually take it out to about 2,200 RPMs. Okay. Um, and you can listen to it, too. Um, as you pull out the power, you kind of get used to just like, okay, I know this is the power I want to be at. Hit 3,500, you start it. Yep, so I like to kind of simultaneously level off the nose, so kind of like push forwards a little bit, and I'll pull out the power about like that. Okay. And then, yeah, and then, and then you can fix the trim. Okay. So that you don't have to, you know, keep flying the plane. Can I just roll that up a little yep. bit? Yep. Yep, so if you feel like the plane was a climb, you'll do exactly what you're doing right now. You'll swipe it off. And do you want to give me a left turn out that way? Well, actually, we'll go over Harrisonburg. Did you go to school in Virginia, college? Uh, yeah, I went to Bridgewater, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, JMU's right over there. Bridgewater is... Traffic in Shenandoah Valley. Side 2, 4, Army, Delta, Texas, and Bank of Vermont. Can I personally want to feel your stocks from Bridgeport? I think it a little bit more nose down trim. Oh, the other way. Oh, the other way. Yep. Right. Yeah, it's kind of good. See that little shiny building straight ahead over there? Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll fly towards that. Okay. Hey, it's still climbing a little bit. Hold up. Nose down a little bit, right? Yep. So if we're in the valley, do you use the top of the mountains as your skyline or as your uh, horizon? Uh, yeah. Okay. You kind of, I kind of aim just below the, a little bit below the skyline. You know, I kind of get my sight picture. I wish, obviously, we had different sight pictures, because, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not really flat. <laughs> right. A little cloudy out today. Yeah, it is a little hazy. Storm coming in from that way, but should be here for a few hours. Stand over traffic. It is uh, Yankee, three miles. I'm having to fight with a little bit. That's pretty natural. Keep a... Uh, Yeah, most of the training we do is, um, generally when I do steep turns and stuff like that, I'll do it in the valley over there, just because I don't want to get in the way of Bridgewater Airport. Right. I don't get a lot of traffic, but, you know. They're flying, uh, what are they, King something out of there? Yeah. Citation 4, now leave it up the departing runway 5, with a left turn off southwest departure. Lost the shine on that building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The sun was hitting it just right a while ago. Oh yeah, it was. It was perfect. I just want to give you a general heading. So if you want to lose altitude, what I'll typically do is pull out the power just to about, okay. you know, 17. Yeah. We're up. And then you'll see, you'll feel the nose wants to drop really hard, right? Right. Um, so what I do is I kind of just smoothly pitch back. Well, actually, right now it's actually not that bad. You've got it trimmed out perfect for a descent. I, I like to descend at like 500 feet per minute. Okay. And that is vertical speed right here, right? Yep. Oh, just get back down to 3,500. And what I like to do, I was kind of talking about it a little bit, you did a pretty good job of it last time. What I like to do is, so when I'm about 50 feet above my altitude, huh? I'll level off, give it a little bit of power, now I just fix the trim, and you know because since we had a, since I had to give it nose up trim before uh, to descend, so we wouldn't descend too quickly. Yeah. So I know when I reintroduce power, I'm gonna have to give it a little bit of nose down trim. Okay. Just, it becomes kind of second nature, and like right. now we're straight and level. Part of that might be your handling, but it should be. Uh, about we're good. Yeah, it's about trimmed out. 
So now that's less work for you to do. And you can give me a right turn. Um, let's give me a right turn to up. Zero, six, zero. Zero, six, zero. Yeah, that's Harrisonburg right there. Okay. Shandoah traffic twin command two seven two eighty Yankee short final five Shandoah. Yeah, you can feel kind of the turbulence from the storm coming in. Yeah. That's why one of the biggest things you kind of have to go into when you're you know starting to get your licenses as you get further on is weather, 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 weather. Yeah. I mean, all about weather. I had a check right where the examiner probably spent like 80% of the time asking me weather questions. The other 20% was the plane. Yeah. I guess he thought you spent most of your time on the plane. Right, exactly. You spend all your time in a plane, you learn how to fly, but then you don't think about how weather can affect flight. Yep, there's the hospital right there. That's where I live, actually. There's apartments down there. Yeah. That's uh, traffic. King S2 Mike is about eight miles inbound on the RNAV 23. We'll be circling to land five. Shenandoah. Shenandoah traffic system 287 Iron Quebec is about eight miles north of the field. Privacy maneuvers 3,500 Shenandoah. One thing I'm big on is communication. I'm always kind of reporting where I'm at. Yeah. Altitude distance from the airport. Yeah, I'm probably a little bit annoying about it too, but you know, the way I see it is the only <laughs> thing I can... The only thing I can't control as a pilot is what other people are doing. Right. Just like in a car. The only thing yeah. you can't control in a car is what other people are doing. Yep. What you're feeling when it gets bumpy, because uh -huh. the clouds are building upwards, okay. so that updraft is what's picking us up. Okay. Yeah. You just kind of roll with it. Oh yeah, I mean, honestly, I've been in, I've been in some bad turbulence, and the plane flies. We'll go ahead and turn right, though. Um, actually, go ahead and give me a turn, left turn to two four zero. Left two four zero. Yep. I was supposed to pick up my girlfriend this afternoon. I don't know if I'm going to with this weather. Uh, runway five, send out traffic. I was going to fly down and pick her up from Richmond. You go into RIC when you go down there? Uh, I'll go down to Hanover, right oh, by okay. Richmond. I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with the area, but... I know where Hanover is. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's where that guy that, uh, Wayne Martin flies out of Hanover. Oh, yeah? Where he started there. I think he's in college now. Oh, yeah, you say you know a guy from Richmond, yeah. yeah well, look. he's the one with the blog. Oh, well, well. Yeah. I don't really know him. <laughs> I feel like I know him because yeah, I've been looking like at his blog. All right. yeah. Oh, it's 240, right? Yep. Shenandoah traffic, twin command to Darwin, runway 5, Shenandoah traffic. A little bit more to the left. Oh, uh, yeah, here we go. You're descending a little bit, so I'm going to give you a little bit of power. Okay. The process we always use for straight and level flight, which will work 100% of the time if you do it, you pitch, power, and then trim. Okay. So, you know, if you're trying to descend at an altitude and you're trying to level off pitch, apply the power, then you trim it out. Just to make, all trim does is relieve control pressures. Kind of like cruise control, you have to set your speed limit before you can set cruise control, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know, in cars nowadays you can probably freaking just type it in and it'll go for you, but... <laughs> One of those Google cars. <laughs> right, right. That's 81 right there. Oh, yeah. I'd use 81 for ground reference maneuvers. Oh, yeah, definitely. I guess turns.
So did you just want to do a half hour intro? Yeah, that's that'll work. Alright. Let me check, you've got the controls. I just want to double check. Right. But you're doing a really good job, by the way. I mean, obviously, you want, one thing you'll work on as you get started is, you know, maintaining altitude, stuff like that, but that's the toughest thing. Shouldn't do a traffic. Yeah. Wind command hit, base to uh, runway 5, shouldn't do a traffic. Alright, we'll go ahead and head back in. Okay. Oh, that's in a half hour. Yeah, Sandro, traffic in Yassin on the mic is uh, about four miles inbound for the... So we took off out of... what, what runway did we land? Runway 5, so we'll check the weather. Automated weather observation. One, six, and zero, zero, nine, 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 no traffic, Cessna 287 Quebec is 7 miles north of the field inbound. We'll be joining the left downwind for runway 5 at 045 Shenandoah. So you can see the GPS right there. You can hit the, I don't know you do it, you can hit the D button. Yeah. And then activate. That's as easy as that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So the pink line is the direction to the field. Yep. And you can see there's Bridgewater Airport right there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a little bit far out, but, you know, it's the way the zoom is. So we'll want to descend down to 2,000, which is traffic parent altitude. Okay. So whenever you're descending, you always want to pull out the car beat. Okay. Just a safety thing, because as you're going down, um, descending, it gets, the way the fuel gets absorbed, it's cooler temperatures. Yeah. And, you know, it can, it, you can have carburetor icing anywhere between 20 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, if there's sufficient moisture. Right. So what I did is I pulled out the power to about 15. Okay. And I see how we're descending about 1,000. Yeah. I'm going to pull back just gently and give it a little bit of nose up trim. Okay. And boom. It's sure. exactly where I wanted that. Close to, Just yeah, enough. jumping between zero and 500. Right. right, I mean, flying's kind of a babysitting job. You know, you're constantly, you know. Just adjust, adjust. Yeah. And that's the biggest gap. That's what's gonna make you go from, you know, a beginner pilot to, you know, I'm soloing and I'm flying cross countries. At the first, you always try to over control the plane, which you're not doing right now. But uh -huh. most people, you know, they're. They hold on. Right, right. right. <laughs> oh, death gripping it. And that, you know, then you're just, you know, twerky with the plane. It's just never good or yeah. fun for me, really. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, so you're getting close to our altitude. So once we get about 50 feet up, I'll give you some power. But, um, oh, okay. But yeah, no, the biggest thing is just, you know, being light on the controls. Hi, Shando. Traffic in here, tune on a mic, is executing the circle. Uh, left traffic for runway 5, Shando. Um, good heading for where we're, where we're headed. Runway taxing Alpha to General Aviation Ramp. Alright, I was that guy. What? Uh, the heading. Are we? Are we okay? Yeah, we're good. Do you see the airport? Straight ahead. Uh. Do you see those silos? Yes. That's a great waypoint. That's where the down okay. the downwind is pretty much just to the left of that. Okay. So we'll be flying towards those silos and then turning right to parallel the field. Okay, so we're coming in perpendicular from the runway right now. Yeah, we're going to come in at a 45 degree angle. Every time you join an air airport, you're always coming at a 45. Okay. Just because then you have, now I see the crosswind and I see the downwind. I see the entire airport. Yeah. If you come straight in, either way, you know, your, your, vis your vision's limited. Right. We're coming in, uh, and we'll, we'll take a right turn okay, no, at a yep. How far out do we start to turn on the downwind leg? How far out should, should the downwind leg be? Um, I like to use the strut as a guide. It's usually about halfway up the strut. The, the run, you'll see when the runway, when you're, when you're parallel, it should be about lined up. Um, I'll show you. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, these silos, I, I, I like to use references like that for sure. every part of the traffic pattern, just okay. because, you know, the more visual guide you have, the less hard you have to work. Right. Shenandoah traffic Cessna 79 Quebec is two and a half miles north of the field, joining the left downwind at a 45 for runway 5, Shenandoah. Nobody's coming in. Nope, we're all clear. We had a guy who just circled around, but he's about to land right there. And then we have another guy. Oh, uh, Shenandoah to enter downwind for 5. Uh, Shenandoah traffic 79, Quebec is left downwind, runway 5. Traffic inbound, what's your current position? Just east of the airport, I'll be crossing the airport to get into downwind for 5 shortly. Roger that, well we just entered the left downwind, we'll keep an eye out for you. Roger, 727. Alright, so we'll want to be careful on altitude, we don't want to be too high or too low. And we cross this silos, so and now I want to start kind of easing it to the right to parallel the field. Okay.
and I like see those hills up ahead. Yeah. I use those as a good guide to okay. for a visual reference. And this track number is a way to cheat with the wind. Okay. Um, if it's 229 or 231, just in that range, then you're parent open field. Okay. About halfway up there. Yep. Yep, perfect. And then you can aim it a little bit more to the right. Just I, I like to aim it right in the V of those hills. Okay. Starting to descend here. So we'll maintain our altitude. Roger that, we have you inside as well. Uh, midfield left downwind, runway 5. Roger that, 727 is behind you. Alright, so we have those 1,000 footer stripes on the runway. Yep. So right here is where I pull out the car peat. Okay. Power to 15. Well, we'll do 17 today because it's a little bit hotter. Um, mixtures forward, and flaps get down to 10. Alright, and now I'm just pitched for 80. If I maintain 80 miles per hour here, my descent is going to be perfect. Yep, 80 on the outer ring, so you're, you're actually, okay. you're perfect right now. So keep aiming it straight, and what I do is I like to look out the window at the runway. I spend most of my attention looking outside. Okay. Now once it's about 45 degrees, I'll turn base. So we'll go and turn base. Shenandoah traffic, 7 9 Quebec, turning left base, runway 5, Shenandoah, full stop. So if we're starting to get too low, which I feel like we're probably getting a little bit too low, I'm just going to give it a little inch of power. Okay. Just like babysitting, like I was talking about, small adjustments. Turn in there, right? So oh no, we'll keep it straight right now. We want to keep a okay. rectangular base. Yeah, traffic pattern should always be a rectangle. Which I'm not a perfectionist, but you know, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. I didn't know that. Shenandoah traffic, seven nine Quebec, turn final runway five, Shenandoah. I didn't know we were perpendicular there. Oh, okay. I see you can go and turn us kind of straight in. Turkey 727, turning base for 5, Shenandoah. Shenandoah traffic 7 on Quebec is short, final 5, full stop, Shenandoah. So I'm aiming for it. See those white lights, those four lights there? Yeah. Two white, two red means you're on glide slope. Um, right now we're a little bit high, but that's fine. No big deal. Yep, just keep us aiming right at the 5. I want you to aim at the 5 like we would kind of just like run into it if we were just going to keep going straight. Alright, now I want to smoothly pull out the power. Alright. And then kind of straighten level flight. I'm looking up at those mountains. Alright. And I'm just trying to keep the plane off the ground as long as I can. 727, turning on final, shun to five. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm just keeping the plane off. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And then you get a beautiful landing. And I'm actually I kind Brought of all the way real quick. No, okay, right. you've got control. Yeah, just because... Uh, Somebody behind us. Right behind us. I don't know why that guy didn't wait for us. Like I said, you can control yourself, but you can't control other people. Right. Yeah, the toughest thing to emphasize... There's a rug. Just be careful. Yep, thank you. Alright, that guy's freaking... Oh, I see him now. I don't he, he, had a, he had a pretty long final. Shando traffic 79, Quebec clear of active at Foxtrot. We have a, another plane coming in. Alright, so now, do you have the checklist on you? Yeah, right? yeah uh, perfect. Alright, see a few things. We'll use that one, yeah, that's our backup checklist. So after landing, trim, make sure that's neutral, flaps up. Extra lean, carburetor heat. I just kind of ran through it just because. Sure. Don't want you spending more time on the ground than you have to. You know, a lot of the stuff I like to kind of go. I like to. Re I'm going to be re rehearsing it with you a lot, you know, just so when you do get on the ground, you know, you can run through it and get back so you're not, you know, spending hours that you don't need to right. spend. The way I learned at CFI school is everything's about efficiency. Which obviously you do. I you always use the checklist for everything, you know. Right. But you know it's kind of hard to be familiar with the checklist. We've never used it before. Right. Going over to Todd. Thank you. Shenandoah traffic seven on Quebec taxiing Alpha back to the hangar. Shenandoah. Just need if I go in front of you to the shop. Ah uh, yes sir, that's okay. Going to the shop. I wonder if there's something wrong with him. <laughs> and 
And the easiest way to learn traffic patterns is, you know, I just draw a diagram on the board. I've gotten really good at drawing runways um, <laughs> on, a, on the whiteboards we have in the classroom. But, I mean, it's just the best way. And then I haven't had one kid who was having a lot of trouble with it. And we ended up just writing it down on a piece of paper for him. And he just, you know, looked at it from time to time just to study it when he was at home. Right. Because, you know, it does, it does, a lot of stuff with flying seems overwhelming at first. I mean, I remember the first time I sat in a plane and I saw all this, I was like, okay, nope. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, you know, the more and more you do it, things get so f familiar. And that's, I mean, that's even something I learned when I was studying education at JMU. You know, you gotta really know two people are the exact same and trying to teach them something. You know, some people right. have to try stuff differently. Um... Some guys might be a little bit slower, and you just have to be a little bit more. I mean, it's not even about patience, really, because I have no problem with that. It's just about, you know, not making them feel pressured. Right. You know, it's unnecessary pressure sometimes. I've got one guy that does that to himself about soloing. But he's actually, I mean, he's good now. He's actually about to get his license. I was like that on myself. I was really hard on myself. And now we're getting ready to the hardest part, hopping out of the plane. <laughs> One well, thing that's nice about this airport is a lot of the other pilots are really friendly. Like, I talk to the random guys all the time. Well, that's kind of just the pilot industry as a whole.